Hi everyone, it's Stefan from EBC Brakes and welcome to our Tech Talks video series. So I'm here with Steve Payne today down at our Bristol Friction Factory. Steve, what are we going to be talking about? Well hi, yeah, Steve Payne, I'm a Research and Development Manager here and um, we're going to introduce the full range of automotive friction materials, starting with the standard black OE replacement pad and right through the range to full track race material. So I'm going to be asking Steve some of the most frequently asked questions about our pad compounds and he's going to be giving us the answers. So let's get into it. So welcome back to EBC Brakes Tech Talk series. This is our last episode on the automotive compounds. I'm here with Steve again and today we're going to be talking about both of the RP materials, RP1 and RPX. These are both pad compounds born out of the new division of EBC, EBC Brakes Racing. Uh, they were the first compounds that were released by the, that division. So Steve, you put a lot of time and effort into developing these. Can you tell me a little bit about them, please? Uh, yeah, here we are, RP1 and RPX, the two pure track materials that we've uh, been developing over the last couple of years. Um, visibly quite different from the rest of the range, as you can see, so unpainted. Uh, they're on a, a stainless steel backing plate uh, as opposed to the, uh, the usual mild steel which means they can cope with being unpainted, that won't rust. Uh, we have all the information on the back uh, laser etched in uh, so that's, that's also going nowhere, that's, that's permanent uh, and yeah as I say pure track materials. Okay and can you use these on the road anywhere or are they just track only? Well, they're not road legal, um, so in Europe, uh, no, they're not road materials. They've not been through the relevant testing. Um, however, they, they do perform at, um, fr from cold, they do perform pretty well. So they can be used on road at a, at a push in territories where R90 isn't an issue, they can be used on the road. Okay, and when you're developing a full race pad, NVH doesn't really come into play does it so should people expect some noise and some dust from these pads yeah, yeah they should um, it's a very different approach when you're developing a, an out and out race pad so you, you you're basically ignoring as you say all the MVH issues if it's noisy generally people have got a helmet on and a very loud engine in front of them so it's just it's just not a concern so if you if you do choose to use these on the road where it's uh, where it's legal to do so you can expect some noise um, and they're also likely to be uh, a relatively dusty pad as well. Um, there's always compromises when we're developing friction materials and the priorities with these are performance. Uh, everything else is secondary. It's an out and out performance pad uh, designed to work at extremely high temperatures. Okay and you know it's not to say one's better than the other because that's not the case. They're both extremely good pads for different applications. What is it that separates the two? What makes them different? Uh, well, the main thing I think is um, the RP1, the original pad, has a slightly lower overall friction level, which is a little bit more uh, controllable, a little bit easier to modulate uh, on the brake pedal. Um, and then RPX came in because some of the feedback we had was people wanted a little bit more bite, a bit more friction level, a more aggressive pad. So RPX is a, is a more aggressive version, um, again talking of compromises, it's not quite as easy to modulate as RP1, it's, it's, it's still pretty good but uh, RP1 takes, takes the win there, RPX will, uh, will go on to some higher temperatures, some heavier cars um, and has a higher friction level. Okay, so with RP1 and RPX, it's actually gone down a storm on social media and on forums and, you know, on our website you can see all of the blogs from people that have given us feedback uh, about how much they enjoyed using the pads and, you know, what they used them for. What differentiates these two pads over EBC pads from the, from the past? Uh, really, it's, it's, it's the approach, the development approach was completely different. So you, your, road, your road legal pads, you have to start off with an approach that says these can't be noisy and these can't be dusty. And that brings in certain, certain compromises as you start to push um, up the duty levels. Um, this was approach from the other, the other side, so this was performance is everything. Um, and if we get a bit of noise and a bit of dust, 
we don't care basically this is this is a, a pure performance right. pad so it's approached from the opposite direction and what type of cars are people going to be using rp1 and rpx4 the, the aim is race race cars um track day cars perfectly suitable um, in europe you've got to change your brakes when you get to the track obviously but uh, uh the aim for these was race was race cars so for example the uh, the gt cup porsche up there runs rpx um, and there are there are plenty of others you probably know more than i do but so yeah like you say um these are developed for out and out race cars you know spark plug steve used them in his fiesta on track days we've got lotus cup cars using them we've got porsches using them and they just seem to have gone down really well in the track day community and we can see that on social and you can see that on our website like i said previously from the feedback that we've been given um another question i've got for you with these pads can you use any type of disc or rotor, does it have to be like a two-piece floating or will it work on a, a normal disc? It'll work on any, um, any cast iron disc. Um, there's, no, there's no particular reason why you need to use one disc over another. Obviously, uh, EBC's discs are, are a good option, but they will work on any grey cast iron disc. Okay, and the final question, what do you need to do to bed these pads in? Because it differs drastically from the rest of the range. Yeah, it does. I mean, these need to be put through a, a couple of heat cycles, and the uh, all the information is supplied with every every box of pads. Uh, so the instructions are in there. They're also on the website, but they need to be they need to be got hot to the point potentially where they're smoking, um, and then cooled down. Um, but yeah, the the procedure is all written in the uh, in the boxes that are supplied. So as always, thank you, Steve, for explaining the differences between the RP1, the RPX. And as always, if you head to the link in the description, you'll be directed to a page which will tell you all of the things that you should and shouldn't be using these pads for with their strengths and some feedback actually from uh, customers that have bought these previously. Um, that is it for our automotive tech series. Um, we won't be going through any more automotive compounds because that is all that we've got at the moment. Steve, are we working on anything else currently for automotive? Well, we're always working. Okay. We're always, always improving, always developing. So, uh, so yeah, can't talk too much okay. about it. But nope. there's, there's always something in the pipeline. That's fine. So we will be back with another series. It'll be very similar to this, but we'll be talking about motorcycle brakes, mountain bike brakes, and ATV brakes. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then.